Hello, it's Ashley here from Paper and Twine and welcome to day two of Christmas crafting in October. Yesterday was a bit of a shambles, wasn't it? Let's be honest, um, I wasn't organised. I knew what I was making, but um, I wasn't fully prepared. So a little bit more prep today. Um, hopefully a quicker project. Um, but just to remind you, this is what we made yesterday. And I have had another play today, actually, just to show you that you can make it out of pre-patterned paper. So I've used Hunky Dory, Adorable Scorable, and just a little sentiment on the front, and um, just covered the inside. That took me no more than five minutes because I knew what I was doing. So really, once you know what you're doing, you can make those very quickly. But we'll pop those out of the way because we don't need them and I'm going to show you what we're going to make today so um, these used to be quite popular when I used to do craft fairs it's a little emery board in a little wallet um, and you know lots of women like to have this kind of thing in their handbag um, and these are cheapest chips to make and you can use your scraps so pop that out of the way so talking of scraps um i literally had um a piece of black card and what you will need for this is um some black card and some patterned paper so um for the base of your little wallet you need a piece of card that is one and a half inches by four and three quarter inches and you are going to round all of the corners so i'm just going to bring in my envelope punch board which has got a corner rounder it isn't the best corner rounder in the world but it is the only corner rounder that i have got so use what you've got if you haven't got a corner rounder you could just as easily leave the edges square but i just think the rounded corners oh you see that didn't cut very well the rounded corners just gives a better finish but you can see mine isn't uh, behaving very well there we go we got there in the end and then for the back of your uh, little uh, card piece you will need a piece of patterned paper that is um, one eighth of an inch less so we had one and a half so that's going to be one and three eighths by four and five eighths and again you're going to round the corners and stick that on now i think with a bit of jiggery pokery you can get all of your um, pattern paper out of one piece of six by six but i cut mine stupidly so um yeah so we're just going to glue this on the back i'm using the butterfly from um 13 arts i'll show you the collection in a minute it was in a recent haul i think it's a new collection from them we're just going to center that on the back like so and i think that's quite elegant isn't it so the paper that i'm using is back in time from 13 arts and yes i cut my paper before i was thinking about measurements so i've actually sacrificed two pieces of paper but you will need another piece of patterned paper for your wallet that is three inches by five inches so could you get Yes, I'm sure with jiggery pokery you could get both pieces out of one piece of um, six by six. So here is my piece that is three inches by five inches and I'm going to bring in my little score tool. So this is hopefully quite a quick project today because I'm coming on later with my favourite things in September which will be quite a long video so um putting your paper in in the right direction this is going to be the top obviously because it's directional paper but if you're not using directional paper it really doesn't matter on the long side we're going to score actually we want it that way don't we 
no I was right the first time <laughs> we're going to score at four and a half this is going to make the bottom um, of our wallet and then you're going to rotate onto the short side and you're going to score at one and one eighth and two and a quarter like so now you can use a circle punch to cut a little thumb notch but i'm going to use my envelope punch board and i'm going to line it up line my paper up so that the notch bit that you can see the actual uh, punch bit the metal bit is in the middle roughly of this piece of patterned paper so there's my score lines that are going to be the front of my wallet and that looks about central and you get a nice little different shaped thumb notch without too much effort so what we're going to do now is get a pair of scissors and we're going to fold and burnish our score lines oh hold on postman is at the door hold on sorry about that big package for ella i think it's clothes and um a letter for pete and i've got some happy mail that's come from america i'll show you in a minute so um yeah this paper does crease a little bit but what we're going to do now is um kind of notch cutting away that excess we don't need that I didn't cut that very well I thought I was going to be more organized today well I am organized it's just um lots of lots of mistakes lots of drivel okay and we do the same here so we're just cutting away a little bit of bulk put that in my scraps and then we're just going to fold those over in fact we'll do it I think it doesn't really matter how you do this because this is going to be stuck down but I like that it looks a bit neater so put a little bit of adhesive on this edge here I like using the cosmic shimmer because it's a quick grab and um, you can be precise with it and we'll fold that up and then we're going to bring in our piece and we're going to stick this to the front make sure you see i've got a little bit of overlap there i don't think it matters because once you've got your um nail file in you're not going to see and just make sure you've got it the right way on both sides and um, we're going to just glue this down see how quick this is and then i've had a couple of minutes drivel at the start of this but you can knock these up very quickly what i would do is batch make so i've got all my bases i've got all my um wallet pieces and then just have a little production line so there you can see mine slightly different to the one i showed you i've got a bit more of an edge here because i made this slightly wider i just wanted it a little bit chunkier and i'm actually going to just come in with my scissors and just tidy up this because my corner chomper isn't very good i might invest in a proper corner chomper but there's so many things i want you can't have them all can you now um emery boards you can buy very cheaply mine are just a pack of five from wilco i can't remember how much they cost i've had these in my stash a while i'm going to take um the top end and i'm just gonna insert it into my wallet and you want it kind of hanging out the top like that so people can grab it but to make it easier i'm hoping that this will chomp through so i'm going to use my one eighth of an inch punch and punch a hole near the top of my emery board and it is hard but I've 
started it. I remember how I did it before. That nah, doesn't want to go. My other hole punch must have gone through, um, but I am going to use my pokey tool. Now I've started an indentation. You can see I've got an indentation. So I'm hoping my pokey tool will do the job. Obviously be careful. Um, yeah, if you've got a crocodile big bite or whatever they're called, that that would work. But you can see I've managed to get in there. You could leave this step out, but I just like the little bit of cord at the top poking through. And I'm going to go back in from the other side and just work until I've got a hole that I'm happy with. So, with a bit of jiggery pokery, I have made a hole. Um, I don't know how I made it before, to be honest with you. Um, I must have had a different hole punch. But if you've got a cropper dial, that would work perfectly. You could obviously drill if you've got like a, a, a Dremel type drill. But I'm just using this thick darning needle to um, just poke out a bit of excess. So I've made a bit of a mess of that, but we're all right. We're all right, I tell you. So um, I'm just going to put some of this black cord through. You don't need a lot. I got this from Hobbycraft. It wasn't terribly expensive. I think it's um, one millimetre thick cord. Yeah, it's about a mil. So I'm going to cut about that much and then I can always trim it down afterwards and this is where it could be tricky just feeding that through might need to use my needle to um, actually get it through God oh, blimey, this is going to be a simple project today. It is very simple. It's just um, having difficulty with this. There we go. That's got that through. Just even up those ends. Thread through. Tie a knot. I've gone with black because my background is black, but obviously you can make this any colour that you like. I could have threaded a bead on there, but what we're going to do is just going to put a little jemmy or something on here. So, um, having a look at my gem collection. So if you've sent me embellishments, um, a lot of them are in here. Um, these are the Julie Hickey glosses that I really like, but I don't think those are going to be the right colour palette, are they? Um, I think I'm going to go somewhere down here in the bottom. I've got some flat backed pearls. I think those are going to be too small and they're not the right colour. Um, yeah, I've got these got these flat backed pearls in these kind of metallic -y colours. Had these a very long time. I bought them from Create and Craft back in the day. Um, which do we think looks nicer? That one or that one? I think we'll go for that one because it'll be a little bit more of a contrast um, with the actual emery board. So I'm going to put a dab of adhesive on there. Pop my pearl on. Wait for that to dry a minute and then we'll pop this in our little wallet. And you can get cello bags um, on Amazon. Um, you, ju you just put in the dimensions and there's a whole load come up. But I managed to get one that was, you know, a, a good fit for this project. And we'll just pop that in. 
with the pearl poking out of the top and I think if you put that in a little cello bag you could embellish this more um, I think that's a really cute little stocking stuffer or craft fair item so um, shall we just quickly look at the happy mail I know it has come from California and it says it's from crafty ruse Michelle Soma so I wasn't expecting anything let's have a look and see what she's sent me it's a shame it hasn't got a foreign stamp on it let's see what it was posted so oh gosh it was only posted September the 24th so it's only really taken a week to get here let's have a look and see oh look at that isn't that gorgeous it's got some Tim Holtz ephemera October 31st 1902 22nd of the 9th 47 I think that says we've got some jammies here and this gorgeous sunflower botanical um print and then a little bit of rickrack and it's been edged with what looks like um could be wild honey and there's something inside oh look Ah, oh, Ashley, thank you, friend, for your most beautiful ATC and embellishment box entry into my challenge. I appreciate all the beautiful beads and the vintage ones as well. I am so very happy to call you my crafty friend. You're an amazing crafter and a huge inspiration to all of us. Oh, hope you are doing well. Love you, Michelle Crafty Ruse. You'll be receiving a little package shortly. I'm behind on everything. Oh, bless. And look, we've got an altered paper clip. It's a beautiful day and a little topper i wonder if she's made that knitted that or oh, it's in that kind of really nice teddy bear yarn oh that's lovely that's um, brightened my day thank you michelle that is really lovely so i will be back tomorrow with day three of christmas crafting in october i'm actually going to get on and upload it now because uh, we're going out tomorrow for my father-in-law's 91st birthday we're going out for lunch um so yes it might be a slightly longer project tomorrow i don't know uh, lots of drivel again today the actual project itself is really quick and easy to make i hope you'll have a, a go at making it and let me know uh, what you think I didn't show you the back, did I? I love this paper. I'll be back tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye now.